Queen Victoria's parents were thrust together after the untimely death of Princess Charlotte of Wales. Her death left the succession in crisis and the unmarried sons of King George III of the United Kingdom scrambled to find suitable wives to have children with. This led to the marriage of Prince Edward, Duke of Kent and Strathern and Princess Victoria of saxe coburg salfeld Let's dive into their lives. Prince Edward, Duke of Kent and Strathern was born on the 2nd of November 1767, the fourth son and fifth child of the 15 children of King George III and Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz Edward was first educated at home by the Reverend John Fisher before he was educated in Lüneburg, Hanover and Switzerland. In 1785, Edward began his military training with the Hanoverian Guards. In 1790, Edward arrived back in England without permission and his father immediately sent him to serve in the 7th Regiment of Foot in Gibraltar. While in Geneva, Switzerland, Edward met Julie de Montgenet de Saint Laurent, who was his mistress from 1790 until 1818. After Edward got married in 1818, Julie moved to Paris. There is no evidence of any children born from this relationship, but several families in Canada came descent from Edward and Julie. In 1791, Edward was transferred to an army position in Canada, and Julie accompanied him. The couple were popular in Canadian society, and they remained there until 1798, when Edward was allowed to return to England. In 1802, Edward was appointed Governor General of Gibraltar. He was harsh to the army forces, and this led to serious consequences. On Christmas Day, he refused to allow the army garrison to celebrate with alcohol, and it led to bloodshed after the soldiers became mutinous. Edward was recalled to England, but retained the title of Governor General of Gibraltar for the rest of his life. Edward was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal and was appointed Ranger Hampton Court Park. Following the death of his only legitimate niece, Princess Charlotte of Wales, in 1817, the rest of George III's unmarried sons sought out marriages. George III's daughters were too old by this point to possibly produce a child and several of his sons were already in childless marriages. Only Prince William, Prince Edward and Prince Adolphus were unwed and all three got married in 1818. Edward broke off his relationship with Julie and focused on his new wife, Victoria of saxe coburg salfeld whom he married on the 29th of May 1818. Upon their marriage, Edward became a stepfather to her two children from her first marriage. They had a second ceremony on the 13th of July, 1818 at Kew Palace. They lived the first few months of marriage in Lenigan, where Victoria's son was the sovereign prince. But once Victoria became pregnant, they moved to England, where their only child was born on the 24th of May, 1819, Victoria. Edward was proud of his infant daughter and leased Woolbrook Cottage as the family's home. In early January 1820, Edward caught a cold and within days it worsened. He developed pneumonia and his condition was worsened by the doctors forcing him to undergo bleeding and cupping. Eventually he died on the 23rd of January 1820, just six days before the king died. He left very little to his wife and daughter, only debts, which his daughter paid off once she became queen. Next, we will focus on Victoria, Duchess of Kent. Victoria was born Princess Victoria of saxe coburg salfeld on the 17th of August, 1786. She was the fourth daughter and seventh child of ten children born to Franz Frederick, Duke of saxe coburg salfeld and Augusta of Rus Ebersdorf. On the 21st of December 1803, Victoria married Emma Carl, 2nd Prince of Lenigan. 
They had two children together, Carl and Fyodora, born in 1804 and 1807 respectively. Emic Carl died in 1814 and was succeeded by their 10-year-old son, Carl. On the 29th of May, 1818, Victoria married for a second time, Prince Edward, Duke of Kent, and their daughter Victoria was born in 1819. Victoria became a widow again less than two years after her wedding. Following the deaths of her brother-in-law, George III, and her husband, Victoria's daughter was, was third in the line of succession after her uncles Frederick and William. Neither George IV, Frederick, nor William had any living legitimate children, so young Victoria was almost certainly going to become queen. The Duchess decided to stay in England because of this and raised her daughter in Kensington Palace. Though her daughter was third in the line of succession, the Duchess and Victoria received little financial support from Parliament. She received support from her brother Leopold, however, the widower of Princess Charlotte, who received a generous allowance from Parliament upon his marriage to Charlotte, which he continued to take following her death. In 1827, Prince Frederick died, and in 1831, George IV died. William became William IV, and without any legitimate issue, his niece became heir presumptive. The Duchess and young Victoria received increases in income, and Leopold surrendered his British income upon his ascension to the Belgian throne in 1831. The Duchess developed a close relationship with John Conroy, her household comptroller, who used his position with the Duchess to obtain power and influence. Conroy and the Duchess tried to control and influence Victoria with the Kensington system, a strict and elaborate set of rules they devised. Due to Conroy's influence over the Duchess, the Duchess's relationship with her daughter suffered and it did not mend until Victoria herself had had children. William distrusted the Duchess and grew to hate her, and for the Duchess, vice versa. The Duchess offended the King when she took rooms in Kensington Palace reserved for the King and snubbed his illegitimate children. It all came to a head during a dinner party in 1836 where the king declared that he wanted to live until Victoria's 18th birthday so the duchess would never become regent. William did so, passing away a month after Victoria had turned 18. A regency was not needed and Victoria's first act as queen was for her bed to be removed from the room she and her mother shared. In 1840, Victoria married Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, and nine months later, she gave birth to her first child, Victoria, Princess Royal. The Duchess reconciled with her daughter, most likely with Albert's influence and persuasion over the Queen. The Duchess then became a doting grandmother, and her relationship with the Queen improved even further over time. In March 1861, the Duchess had surgery to remove an ulcer on her arm, and a serious infection set in. On the 15th of March 1861, the Queen was notified that her mother only had hours to live. Victoria, Albert and their second daughter, Alice, immediately travelled to Windsor, where the Duchess was living at Frogmore House. The Duchess was in a semi-coma state and had difficulty breathing. At 9.30 in the morning on the 16th of March, 1861, Victoria, Duchess of Kent, died at the age of 74. The Duchess was buried at Frogmore in the mausoleum of the Duchess of Kent. Both Edward and Victoria loved their daughter. Edward only got to spend seven months with his daughter, but greatly adored her. Victoria, who got to watch their daughter grow up, had a difficult relationship with the Queen, but loved her unconditionally to the end.